Zelda in Fulte Podcast. Bum, 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 bum. Hey everybody, welcome to the Zelda Informer Podcast. My name is Adam. Thank you so much for joining us this week. That opening was brought to us by Brandon and Company, who usually provides our opening theme song. And this close week's closing theme is uh, the Hero of Time remix by Jish. Thank you so much to everyone who emailed your fan topics and theme song submissions and everything else of that nature. If you have any of your own ideas or any of your own topics or anything else you want to share with us, the team, please send this to ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. Once again, that's ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. But first, here's the most interesting news from this past week. This week, reports of a possible strike by voice actors made headlines. Persona 5 and Star Fox saw delays, and my own lack of interest reached a new low today when the Angry Birds movie trailer was released, and I've already forgotten what I was talking about. Once again, my name is Adam. Thank you so much for joining us. This week, I am happily joined by... Hey guys, it's your coolest, uh, recognizable guy from the podcast, Chris, who was actually recognized from the podcast this week by a friend of mine who didn't know I did it. So that's kind of cool. Oh god, I'm stuck in this box. Someone help me get out of this tiny little box. Adam is keeping me stuck in the Colin, you keep quiet in there. Oh, Jesus. You keep keep quiet in there, Colin. Why are there so many spiders? I don't get it. Adam, hit the box with the stick. (laughs) You have to hit the spiders from behind. You have to wait till they turn around. Why? Why do they have to turn around? (laughs) Because you need to get the 100 collectibles. This is so counterintuitive. It's like playing a PS4 exclusive. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, we like PS4. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. We can't, we can't talk ill of Sony systems or elsewhere. It will, I oh, mean, I, I like PS4. We get the sack. <laughs> Last but not least, we're joined by... Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Josh Thomas here from the BitBlock, and I am really excited to be chatting with you boys today. Let's get this going. Yay! Yay! Oh, I have air horns. I, I would be more horns. excited if Chris wasn't here. Oh. Yeah, go to hell! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's an equal other place I could go to, um, but it's not hell. Hell? Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say... <laughs> I was gonna suggest the the same thing, uh, but yeah. What have you guys been playing this past week? Uh, I turned back on Metal Gear Solid and I enjoyed it. I also went back and played Ground Zeroes because I didn't enjoy that as much. Um, I went and turned on my Nintendo system, played a round of Splatoon, and that was cool. And uh, you know, guys, uh, stay fresh. You know, <laughs> it's just good Thank life you, advice Jared. right there. Yeah. Oh God, don't call me Jared. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't play much since I was I've been on you know, the road the last two weeks. Like I Like the novel? <laughs> no, like the uh, Willie Nelson song. Oh, okay. But um Yeah. There no, is I've, a difference. I, I've, I've, what? There is a difference. I guess. But <laughs> I've I've been at two different cons. Uh so for the most part I've just been on my three DS playing the Ace Attorney trilogy. And, Very cool. Uh, oh, I love the Ace Attorney games so goddamn much. It's hard not to love those games about lawyers and their <laughs> melodramatic sort of actions and their cool hair. Yeah, I, I just <laughs> it's so well written and it's. I mean, some of the early ones have some weird translation they're issues. Ch- that's they're charming it. and cheesy. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so <laughs> I guess I'll go next. Um, yeah. I, I actually have not played a lot, but I did. I am actually really proud to say that I recently picked back up some GoldenEye 007 action on the Wii. Oh, I've been playing, oh that's awesome. I've been playing that with a friend who just recently picked up his own copy off of eBay. And uh, so, Did you, did you like, not tell him about the whole odd job thing? You mean where, like, oh, no, trust me, he knows everything. Like, we've played it locally oh. a lot. And oh, okay. uh, the online servers for that are still actually up because it does not run on Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Really? Yeah, so it's uh, it's definitely the Golden Eye. You know, I was surprised to hear uh, the uh, Colin. You were talking about this a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, how if you play um, Quake Three on Dreamcast or on any other system that has the online capabilities, still you can play with people online right now. Yeah, you can still hook it up um, through modem, and you can still play Quake Three. That is so cool, in my opinion. How many? Like, what are the odds of somebody also playing Quake Three in 2015 at the same time? Surprisingly, <laughs> there's a whole community are you around serious? it. Yeah. yeah, is yeah. there really? Because, That's like because the uh, the Dreamcast had the keyboard and mouse attachment, it's and you so could good. hook it into your computer monitor through VGA. So it's basically a tiny computer. It's so good. I love it so much. Yeah. Huh. So yeah, I mean, that, uh, I think that's basically all I've played. But as I was saying earlier, the GoldenEye remake is, or at least the reboot, reimagining, mm-hmm. reinterpretation, resurrection is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we we get it. That is, was the... is really good. Like it is. Yeah, uh, I love it's it. a shame that 
007 Legends ended up being probably one of the worst 007 <laughs> games ever made. So, you know, it's funny because I remember when that came out, um, I didn't get a chance to play it because I, I didn't have a 360 or a PlayStation 3. So I was a little, like, sad that I couldn't play it. And I heard, based on, like, what everybody who's played it said, it's it's actually pretty terrible. <laughs> I I got excited because I loved the remake so much. Yeah, um, and it's the same Golden team. Eye, and they put it on PC, and I was like, holy yeah. shit, finally a Bond game on PC. And it, it got some bad reviews, and I was like, you know, even the most mediocre of Bond games are still pretty fun. Like, Quantum of Solace yeah. is great quantum of sauce is my favorite is not my favorite you know james bond game or 007 game but it is one of my favorite movie games yeah no it's ever. it's well made um even bad bond games are still good but 007 legends is like a whole new level of awful <laughs> well, that's pretty i have fun. never played a james bond game you or a 007 game at all not any oh not even for the nintendo 64 no i didn't own an n64 growing up play here are the oh. two games you need to play you need to play oh uh, no three i'm sorry Nightfire, uh, from Russia with Love, and okay. Goldeneye Reloaded. All right, yeah, Nightfire go. is definitely great. I think that's my favorite game. Yeah, Nightfire is game. probably New the homework. best one out of all of them. Did you Did you guys ever play Bloodstone? That was the one that came out in like, but in between the movies of Quantum of Solace yeah, yeah, and I, uh, Skyfall. I have it on the uh, PS3. It's I it's okay. It, it that's what I heard is because it wasn't based. They didn't make any movie about no, it or anything like really, that. It was just really okay. They, and they still use Daniel Craig's likeness, which I thought was funny, unless he mo it or something. Yeah, I'm no, sure. it was kind of a mixture of the two. It was interesting. Um, but anyways. Did you want to tell us your story? I remember you had a story that you wanted to tell me earlier, and I stopped you. I, I Well, I mean, I sort of did it in the intro, but uh, yeah. I actually, so today I was at my I was at my job, uh, that, that wretched thing. Um, and no, you I love your a... job. Don't say bad <laughs> things about it. <laughs> no, I, I mean, if I could do other things full time, that would be great. All right, so uh, I have a coworker that I've known like pretty much all my life. Uh, him and I've been friends since we were like little kids. Uh, in elementary school, we kind of just went to the same school and you know started working together later on in life. And uh, the other day, I mean, he's always known I've done internet stuff, but like the other day today, actually, he uh, came up to me and said, "Hey, man, I was um I was googling some stuff about uh like Zelda, and then I googled Zelda podcasts." And I clicked on the very first link on Google, which was this place called Zelda Informer, and I just realized, that's you I'm hearing on the podcast. I was like, wait, you didn't know I did that? He's just like, no, man, like, that's awesome. And I thought, I was like, oh, my God, my friend Googled my own work without even, like, knowing it was actually me. That's great. That's or really having cool. me tell him. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm glad he enjoyed that. So it was, a, I forget which episode it was about. It was one of the more recent ones. It was maybe, like, two or three episodes ago or something like that. I'm not sure. Alright. Yeah. That was my that was my little story. That was my irrelevant story for the night. Well I liked it. It's always it's always cool to like, you know when people when that people you randomly you stumble upon the stuff you do. Yeah. Especially since over. there's no face attached to it necessarily. Like this is all audible, you know? Mm-hmm. This this is like I people don't see me when we say the things with our voices. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Josh, how has that ever happened to you? Uh, I've actually had people come up to me in public and, uh, recognize me from the Biplock. Oh. Which is really strange and flattering. What do you tell them? Like, they come to you like, oh my god, you're Josh from Biplock. You tell them the universe is a hologram and then you walk away, <laughs> waving your arms. <laughs> well, it was like, can I get a photo? Can I get an autograph? Can you sign my baby? Uh, um, like, what is... I've, th- I've signed a few babies. I've shaken <laughs> a few hands. <laughs> but ma'am, you don't have a baby. Give me a few months. Yeah. The lady, a woman actually went out and got pregnant to have a baby so I could sign it. It was really... Yeah, that, dude, that sounds awesome. Yep. It's very, it's, it's very nice for her, actually. <laughs> it is, yeah. I actually didn't say what I was playing this week. Yeah, you skipped... Uh, you, you, you guys don't mind. You've been playing Hello Kitty Roller Derby for the GameCube and you just didn't want to admit it. Josh, I told you don't want to tell anyone. <sighs> Yeah. Thought you could just Jesus. skip that, huh? <laughs> Josh, you're telling everyone my secrets. I mean, Adam, you don't. You could just. You could just tell us right now. It's fine. We're not. Yeah, I just. I really like Hello you. Kitty. Okay, I'm just really excited. A bit. Um, no, my, but, uh, my mother loves Hello Kitty. Really? Yeah, she does. That's like the one Japanese thing. I mean, I'm sure she likes the culture, but not like the the culture that we know. But uh, the one thing that she loves about Japanese culture is Hello Kitty. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. 
She's loved it for uh, years. Coincidentally, what so was actually... uh, Avril Lavigne's same favorite thing? Oh my god! Oh yeah, <laughs> I love that video. Do you really? Yep, it's it's perfect. It's perfect in every offensive possible way. It makes me laugh. Kawaii. Uh, but this weekend, I actually uh, went to a Project M tournament for the first time. Ooh. Oh, and how was that? A long time. I did not win a single match. I mean, Good. a single set. I I won I I won some matches. I didn't win like a full game. Well, you know, what, Adam, you you kind of suck at Smash Brothers, sir. Hmm. I will have you know that that is entirely true, <laughs> but I will argue it vehemently. <laughs> Well, listen. Um, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna surprise you guys even more here. I actually what? play. You ready for this? I mean, if you're going to tournaments what? with Project M, this is gonna blow your mind. Oh what? man! I'm a firm believer that the only true way to play Smash Brothers is with items on on very high any stage, any characters. So the- you, <laughs> sir, <laughs> and Josh. No, no, no. I'm listen. looking at these pictures that you sent me of you and your Zero Suit Samus cosplay, <laughs> and I I just feel betrayed. <laughs> Listen, I, I, Sakurai sorry. San, the the Lord himself, the is, Lord is, is an item San. player. So there you go. In in the year one twenty six of our of of Nintendo, our Lord Sakurai doth say, "Yep, uh, let there be items." <laughs> yeah, what he had said. <laughs> I bet you also want yeah. Ridley in the game. Uh, I would take Ridley over some of the others, I think, but I'm not actively. Who would rooting. you take Ridley over? Like, name the first character you take Ridley. Uh, over. You ready for this? You guys are you guys are gonna regret having me on. I would take Ridley over Shulk any day. All right, someone get this guy out of here. <laughs> someone just wheel him out. Wheel what him other out. ones? Let me let me hear him right now. Uh, I mean okay. Shulk. I mean Shulk isn't bad. Uh, I just like Shulk because he's the first from Xenoblade. He's the only from Xenoblade. <laughs> the first of many. No, but many one. What other character? I want to know. Uh, who's the 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 female version of Marth? What's her name? Lucina. Lucina. Yeah, Lucina. I, I think she. The babe. I'd want her in there or out of there. To be honest, I don't even want Ike in the game. I just want Martha. All right, Roy, do your it. top five. <laughs> top five favorite characters. No, top in five characters you don't want to see. You, did, you didn't want to see. <laughs> you get just, just get all the rage yeah, out. Just do We're it. just gonna just like paint you as a very out. angry Listen, person the, this the, week. The comments on this podcast are gonna be never have this guy on again. Why'd you bring a mean person for <laughs> Bit Block? I didn't know Bit Plot was so angry. Well, they know. They, they, I think a lot of people know my stance on the uh, Smash roster. I oh, don't. Man. So this sounds like some heated stuff. <laughs> flew me in. The stance. I okay. Said. Well, um, I'm. See, you guys know. Like, I'm. I'm the item wacky Nintendo kind of a guy. So I want. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm more leaning towards like Duck Hunt Dog is crazy awesome to me. Yeah. Like, that's I can't yell at you then. God damn it, you. <laughs> Like, I love those wacky, crazy characters. So, like, the fact that there's, I think, five Fire Emblem characters, that's kind of an eh, as far as I'm concerned. Are you eh. picking up the uh, Retro 3-pack? I Yes, that I have I to. know I am. That Yeah, that looks amazing. Um, yeah. when, when, does that, when does that come out? Two days from now. Oh, my God. Wow. I really have not been paying enough it's attention the, to the It's the 25th, I think. All right. Let well, me, let me check that. my GameStop app, because, you know, I'm a real gamer. Uh <laughs> Power yeah. to the players, Power to the player. but not oh, your right. wallet. All right, so so top five characters you just don't want in the game that are in right now, who are they? You're going to get me in so much trouble. If no, Dark Pit fine. isn't on your list. Dark Pit is on the list, yes. Dark Pit's on that good. list. Okay, good. Okay, so good. I agree Pit with you. Because he is... Shulk can go. Okay. I'm going to get a lot of crap okay. for Shulk. I mean, if you love Shulk, I listen. So you've already gotten rid of two of the pretty boys. <laughs> Two of the, of the cuties that I like looking at. I admire at. that Shulk runs around in his underwear. I'll give him credit for that. Oh, it's it's fabulous. Uh, um, like I said, uh, female Marth, Lucina. Uh, it's so mean. I don't think there's. Really, I think that's kind of. A, there's maybe not five that I'm like actively against. You just just think about two. Okay, more, well then like, just throw in two really more. Just think of the ones that'll get you in the most trouble with the fire fan emblem. Base. Throw out every one of the fire emblem characters. You cannot throw out Marth and Roy. Just keep them, please. We'll keep, we'll keep uh, we'll, we'll Roy. Keep... You know what? Just make it. We'll keep uh, Mario and Ryu. That's it. Everyone else is gone. I the whole honestly, cast. I've Throw always hated. Out. I've always hated Ike because I felt like ever since since for all like <laughs> they tried to replace Roy. I'm like, how do you replace Roy? He was such a great character. He was completely a clone, but I just liked looking. No, nah, he Roy wasn't more. a clone. He has a lot of different moves. Well, he was. A lot of different, like, Mechanics. No, actually, even even in melee, he was he was balanced very differently. His entire like sword style is different is played differently. You can't really play Roy like you do Marth. 
Roy's got the Russell best. Uh, Roy has the best crowd chant, though. Roy's our boy. Come on, you can't you mm-hmm. can't beat that. No other character's it's, got that. It's I mean, I think spotless. I think I can only think of three that I would really want removed from. All right, let's hear them. Smash Four, and that is Doctor Mario. Okay. Uh, yes. Dark Pit. Okay. And Greninja. I would not be upset about any of those going. I, those are the only three that are just. I I honestly feel like are kind of a waste, but I mean the rest I think are a okay. I think guys, anyone course, well, actually, anyone who complains about Pac Man is needs to just get the wow, fuck Pac-Man's out. Pac Man's awesome. Oh, Pac Man's like, awesome. Pac-Man. Yeah, I love Pac Man. Pac Man's yeah, the best. Uh, and of course, Pac Man was in that game. It wouldn't be complete. I love, you guys are all. I love that they added Pac Man. I love that they added We Fit Trainer. I love that yeah, they yeah. added uh, Duck Hunt Dog. <laughs> If anyone, if anyone who's ever listened to the first episode of the Zelda Informer podcast and is somehow still listening, knows how much I love Duck Hunt Talk. I, I think Duck Hunt was good. It was, and even if it was just like a gimmick at one point, I just feel like we need more gimmicks. But we, I mean, it's, as far it's as... a creative playstyle. It's a totally different kind of character. They really did try and like express creativity with it. I think Duck Hunt is a fabulous addition. I thought he, I, I love playing as him. Not even to rehash good him, what I said four like... weeks ago, but I would love to see Phoenix Wright in Smash. Oh yeah, dude, I want. Uh, all right, I'm not gonna. I want Professor Layton over Phoenix Wright. Since the, uh, since the, uh, the deadline for the the Smash belt is coming up, Josh, I think this is a perfect time to ask. You know, what characters would you want to see in Smash Brothers added? Uh, and who do you think is likely to get added? If you can give me like a uh, top three or top like top one, I can give you. I can one? give you top four. Really? I, okay. I really would Let's like go with to it. see. Now I don't know how likely these are, but number one, I've been a huge fan of the WarioWare series because it is so absolutely insane. I really want a representative from WarioWare, and I can think of nobody better than Nine Volt because he's obsessed with Nintendo history. So what better game to put him in than Smash Brothers? So that's the, all right. Well, especially good. this one that is so retro dedicated. Yeah, and he's he's just a really cool looking character, I think. And since he's obsessed with Nintendo, he could use like peripherals as part of his you know it's combat. So much Wario as a kid. And I mean, doesn't Duck Hunt use like the the gun? The does he the, use that, or was that just in the animation? It's. I thought it was in his final Smash or something like that. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the zapper. The zapper. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he physically shows the zapper, but it, you go into like that Hogan's Alley sort of cutscene. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also want to see yeah. Professor Layton. As you guys have said, yes, oh, I yeah. think that would be amazing. We've talked about that. We've talked about that in detail. Um, Paper Mario. I know some people might not want that, but I would love to see. Right, I'd love to see you Paper want, you Mario. You want to take Doctor like... Mario, but you don't want to. Yeah, you don't wanna I, take out Paper I don't Mario. Want another Mario. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he could be like Game and Watch, which would be really cool. I'd want to see Paper Mario is an amazing series. It's literally like the only time I've genuinely adored an RPG. So personally, uh-huh. I want to see Paper Mario. You know, an RPG guy. Uh, if it's got Paper Mario in it, I am. Well, then we're going to get along famously. <laughs> I said sarcastically. <laughs> like, I can actually, I can't even really get through the uh, Mario and Luigi games. <laughs> so that'll give you an idea. Really? Yeah, there's. I think those are great. They're very different from Paper Mario. I just, they're too, like, uh, yeah. too long and drawn out. I mean, they're they're definitely uh, an expansion on the Mario RPG, like the first one for the uh, N64, I think. No, that's wrong. I think it's, I could be, I'm not even going to remember right. But yeah, the first Mario RPG. Uh it's the same kind of style with the blocks and, you know, timed button mechanics and that sort of thing. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's I think it's a great game. It's a, the newest one. Uh, uh, Dream, Dream Team. Team. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little bit too handholdy. That one that uh, one was really painful for me to play through because it, it like this. The tutorials were ridiculous. Random. That and Paper Mario on 3DS are really bad. See, I would prefer mm-hmm. Sticker Star over uh, Dream Team any day. Mm. I don't know. Sticker Star's great. That and I'm, I'm Yoshi's one of the... Island. Yoshi's New Island Dream was kind of... Like, like, I didn't think Yoshi's of... New Island was offensive, but it was okay. That's kind of I a realization really I had the other day. There's a lot of 3DS sequels to previous games, and the 3DS versions are not very good. Luigi's Mansion is yeah. another one that got a sequel to a game. Yeah, but that one's good. That's like one of the lone exceptions. But do you think it's as good like, as the original? Like, not. Not as much, but it has more content. But does more content mean better game? I think that's a perfect example of Ooh. no. Sometimes better, more content means too much game, too complicated. I don't know. I think it was cool. I mean, it's not like the original Luigi's Mansion was a masterpiece or anyway. Oh, I listen. Ooh, them just fighting words. <laughs> but I mean, uh, that, I'm getting ready uh, to play that game soon. I said it a while ago, game. but I didn't really like New Super Mario Brothers two. Uh the the new one. You mean as well or number two? No, the the number two. 
Oh, well, who who did like that game? Exactly. I think I think Mario Maker was definitely a, like a nail in the coffin that they're like, we're not going to do that kind of game anymore because we know nobody's going to care for it. But New Super yeah, Mario think... Brothers U was so good. Are you being sarcastic? Yeah, it was. It was really good. And it spawned Toad's treasure. No, that was 3D Captain World. You dingle. Yeah, 3D World. Oh, oh, my that bad, was, my bad. That was 3D World and also <laughs> Zelda. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because yeah. it was originally a Zelda game. That would have been really cool to get some DLC where it's like Captain Toad dresses up like Link and goes through little Zelda dungeons. Aww. I love or, Treasure Or how about so they cute. actually put Link in the game? You know? <laughs> they can do that, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we never finished uh, your list. Oh, so the, 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 the fourth one would be uh, you guys are going to either hate me or agree with this for the craziness. Wait, wait. You only said Paper Mario. You No, know, you said Paper Mario, Professor Layton. Are you talking about the and, Smash uh, characters? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, said, I am sorry. Yeah, no, you, so, yeah, no I was thinking Yeah, Nine Volt, Professor Layton, Paper Mario, and Captain Rainbow. Yeah. Yeah. Captain really? Rainbow. Yeah. yeah. That game is I'm I am one of the biggest fans of that game. Like I know that it didn't come out, you know, outside of Japan, but it is like true amazing skip work where it's just got so many crazy characters. It's kind of a little bit like Zelda in a way to where you level up and you explore new areas and not level up, but you get like new items and powers. Uh and mm-hmm. it's it's just so cool. And I think Captain Rainbow as a character would be really fun in Smash Brothers. He could have so many interesting moves and stuff. I really want him. I don't think it'll ever happen. That that will never happen. But when I look at him, and I mean, aesthetic, it's aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, I think he'd be cool. Right. I am unfamiliar with the game, honestly. Well, that's really disappointing. Now I want you to hang up this Skype call, and I'm going to commandeer this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Not if I do Jeez. first. Hi, I'm this Colin. Is... Oh no! All right, all right, podcast. guys. Listen. It's, it's, topic. I feel anyone's... like the captain who woke up in the middle of the night. And, like, if, everyone is planning a mutiny, but there's, like, eight mutinies going on at the same time. So now the mutinies are fighting over it, and I just go back into my cabin, and I just go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, if anyone's taking over this podcast, it's me. This is going to become the Chris Informer podcast. I'm going to inform you guys about my life. I woke up this morning. I had some toast. Uh, I went to work. What was on the toast? Uh, uh, I'll just butter. break off and make uh, my own sir, podcast. Sir, I'm a cream cheese people. fan, and I will defend it vehemently. <laughs> you get cream cheese on bagels, Adam. I was going to say, you, you put I cream only... cheese on toast. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, like you... well, I I put cream cheese on every toasted bread that I eat in the morning for breakfast, sir. What? Adam, there's a reason for that. <laughs> what is? Does that have to do with my heritage? Uh, uh, that's just a joke. Between Come on, you and go I. for it. <laughs> You're say it. Oh, happy Yom Kippur! Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I think it's time we move on to a new topic. <laughs> yeah, you can cut that out if you want. Uh... <laughs> that, that's you know me, Adam. These people don't know me. I know. <laughs> Uh, I I have something I want to. Yeah, talk do you guys about. Um, go for let's it? Talk about video game delays. Let's talk about video because, game delays. Uh, uh, recently, Star Fox Zero, which was a game for the Wii U, was which mm-hmm. was a game can yep, confirm and it has been delayed to next year, <laughs> and so now um, numerous websites. In, uh, this is not like a a general opinion by most people. But I've definitely seen a few websites report on this, how the Wii U is now doomed because it doesn't have a big game this holiday. I mean, they're not wrong. But, like, the Wii doomed, U's been no doomed. concern, yes. There's definite concern. They're not going to make enough money this holiday season to get things. Like... I mean, it's not like anyone was going to really buy a Wii U at this point. And I really don't think a Star Fox game was no, going to No, no, it's not about... It. It's... I think t- 2014... It's not about buying the Wii U. It's about people buying games for the Wii U. Because if I, they buy one game for the Wii U, they're likely to buy several. I mean, I feel like... Especially it, it, in the holidays. 2014 is probably the year that Nintendo had the most Wii U sales just because of Mario Kart 8 and Smash Brothers. Mm-hmm. Like, that. that is literally the reason why I got a Wii U. I got a Wii U. And Mario I'm sure Kart there's, out. like, a small percentage of Star Fox fans that would go out and buy a Wii U just to play the new Star Fox Zero. And I think they'd enjoy it. I think they really would. I... I think I enjoyed I mean, it. I'm, I did. I loved it. This just might be my opinion. I think first off, there's enough games that have come out this year for the Wii U alone that I'm sure not mm-hmm. everyone like yeah, Splatoon. Splatoon. And there's still a few that are coming out for the rest of the year, like Fatal Frame. Um, and I mean mm-hmm. Mario Maker just came out, so I'm. There's enough niche going around that it's. You yeah, and I, and I doubt every single person title. who owns a Wii U bought every single game that came out in the last two years from the system. No, okay. I'm sure no, there are yeah, people definitely. that are going to have a, a Bayonetta or Hyrule Warriors now that they're cheaper. Actually, here's mm-hmm. a question for you now that you just mentioned yes. Hyrule Warriors. You know, Hyrule Warriors Legends is being released yeah. on the 3DS. 
is pretty much, I don't want to say it's not a port, but it's just a yeah. 3DS version of the game. Do you think that Nintendo might start, start going on the route where they're going to make 3DS versions for a lot of their console games? I think that'd games? be interesting, but I don't... We have 3DS Smash Brothers. I mean, Mario Kart 7 isn't the same no, as Mario Kart 8. No, because it's an, it's, it's an ad investment, and they could be spending that making other kinds of games, and I don't think Nintendo is really interested in doing that. I think I'm, with uh, Hyrule Wars Legends, it makes sense, because they're adding a bunch of content. I think content it really depends thought, on you know, what games the 3DS deal. can even handle. I mean, when it's that when is you another think big about it, I don't think Splatoon the, would work at the all. The 3DS on 3DS, itself, at least te- technically. Mm-hmm. No, I mean the reason why I bring this up is because you know they're not they're not canceling a lot of games for the Wii U, but like everything's being put on hold for the Wii U while the 3DS is still thriving. You know, 3DS is the best-selling handheld yeah. console. I want to say, like, well, because it's the only <laughs> handheld much. selling console. Sorry, PS Vita. Like, I want to buy you, but you, I just need a reason. <laughs> I need a reason. Um, but it, that's why I'm thinking, like, all right, they can support this handheld for, like, a, at least a few more years now that they have the new 3DS out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's just interesting to think that that could be an option. I mean, I mean, I like, know for right. myself there's enough games coming out this holiday season for the Wii U that I'm interested in. Uh, Fatal Frame, Xenoblade, and hell, even... D- Oh, it's it's yeah, Xenoblade and, X comes and out, right? Hell, even even with its bad okay. reception, I'm still hype as uh, as hell for Devil's Third. It it I forget there was a there was a reason why it got bad reception. Uh, there was like a specific reason why, and it, it was more an uh, a subjective. It has to be because I opinion I've, about the game. I've, it had a really good reception in Japan and in Europe. It like sold right. That was what we were talking so, about. I mean. I remember we had a few conversations and about I mean, this before. It looks ludicrous enough that I feel like it'd be a great ride just for how crazy it is alone. Probably in like a deadly right. premonition sort so of I... way. Okay. Um, do you guys uh, want to switch sub- subjects, uh, get into one of sure our fan thing. topics? Sure. Yes. All right. So uh, James asks, what is your favorite type of gum? How does that Anything with spearmint. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Um, Fudge Gum is nice, and I like their advertisement, because it's wacky, um, Hmm. and it's funny. I personally like Winter Mint, or... Winter Fresh? the blue one. I don't like... You know, I was recently in a restaurant in (laughs) New York City, and they had a mint lemonade drink, and it was like drinking Winter Fresh. It was really weird. Oh, yeah. In Israel, uh, whenever I visit, they always put, like, mint in every beverage, and I hate it, because I don't like mint. (laughs) I love mint. Uh, you it's... don't like mint ice cream? Thin mints? Mint ice cream is different. That's ice cream. Everything... Do, you like, do you like thin mints? Eh, they're okay. I mean, you're not American if you don't like thin mints. I like other Girl Scout cookies, sir. What, you like, uh, what are those called? Lemon somethings? Lemon no. surprise? Mint is weird when it's, like, lukewarm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Josh, oh. what about you? What's your favorite gum? <laughs> You said your favorite gum was blue. <laughs> yes, that's not, that's it was not the a blue type one. of gum. That's a color. <laughs> well, okay. So a lot of spearmint like, is what you're saying, or it's what? it's winter mint. Winter it's fresh. Winter God mint. damn it! I yeah. just said it. Is there? Winter, I'm sorry. Fresh. Uh, I actually don't really often chew gum. As boring as I'm going to be here, but one you take time care of your teeth. That's good. Oh I my do. God. I do. I'm pretty obsessed with that. But I did once try this gum that was banana flavored, and it was amazing. And I've never really? seen it since. I think it was just too good. They couldn't sell it anymore. <laughs> Banana flavored gum. It was the greatest. Can I just say? Tri- it? I just want to say I hate watermelon flavored gum. Why? What is why? What's your beef against watermelon flavored gum? It just it's I don't I like watermelons. I don't like it you know, beaten down to a pulp to get into a, a, a gum stick. You know what I'm you saying? You know, it's not yeah. really a watermelon. I know. They don't, they don't the take fl- a watermelon and <laughs> squeeze it into a it's, stick of gum. It's just like the powder from concentrate crap. I don't care what it is. It just is nasty to me. You know what's uh, my least favorite flavor of gum is citrus. I hate citrus gums. I mean, Why after a like while, that? it just gets, like, messy in your mouth. Huh. You that can, sounds... You can cut that out. Sticky. <laughs> We're talking about gum here, right? <laughs> right. What's the topic? Uh, <laughs> I understand why he asked us this now. Uh, thank you, James, for sending in your topic. If you guys have any of your own, please send them to us at ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. What if Once people again, start, like, ZeldaInformerPodcast your... at gmail.com. Like, which sock is your favorite, the left or the right one? 
Like we got these people got to ask good questions. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a decent question. It helps you <laughs> to know someone. It's I great... now know that I shouldn't buy Josh an entire pack of gum for right. Christmas this year. I'm gonna throw go. it right back in your face, and I'm gonna say, "Get me a toothbrush instead." Yeah, or Hanukkah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, do you guys want to get into another fan topic? Another fan topic that's it. less about gum and more about something. Uh, yeah, actually, it is more about uh, Zelda. Um, James also asked us, in an all-out brawl between all the sidekick characters in the Zelda series, which one would come out on top? Sidekick characters being Navi, Tattle, King of Red Lions, Ezio, oh my god, Ezlo, Midna, Linebeck, Ghost Zelda, and Fi. I think that's all of them. Okay. Uh, now let me just say. As much as I would like to bet on Ezlo, uh, he is a He's hat. A hat. <laughs> he cannot exactly. win. Yeah. I he can eat people with his mouth, but that's about it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm probably gonna go with the boat because he's a boat, and he can just crush people by being a boat. King of right. Red Lines. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, he's from Wind Waker, and Wind Waker is, I think we all agree, the greatest Zelda game. So naturally, anything. From Sir, Wind you Waker, get off my podcast. Anything from you Wind never Waker. Never come back. Is I the think best. So Master the, Chief uh... would win. Uh. Who sent you? <laughs> Do you hate me? Who sent you? Have you listened to this before? Do you Legend know of Zelda I... Wind Waker HD. Greatest Zelda game ever. Drop the well, yeah. I Boom. played BS Legend of Zelda the other day, and I'll have you know that that is... The yeah. DS fantastic. Legend of Zelda? BS. Broadcast to Teleview. Legend of Zelda. <laughs> I have no idea what that would even be. It's a remake of the first Legend of Zelda with a new game plus on the Super Nintendo. Okay. Oh. That that doesn't sound like it would even come close to competing with Wind Waker. Does it have Tingle? What? Does it have Tingle in it? No. Oh, well then what are you even talking about? Can you you travel to the past? (laughs) Yes. Can Can you travel between dimensions? No. Can you even travel? Yes. Can you smash yourself up against a wall? You have a whole world to travel around. Can you turn yourself into a yeah. painting and then walk on the wall? <laughs> it's my favorite. Because the game. answer is no, then it's Josh, not the what? best. What? I said because if you can't, if the answer is no and you can't turn into a painting up against a wall, then there's no way that Zelda is the best game. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's no boats, there's no paintings, there's there's no what is supposed to there's keep no us gimmicks, there's no only, talking you know, hats. The video game. Video games are gimmicks. That's what makes them video games. Hey, you know, they said the same you press thing. Press the button, about a TV. gimmick happens. Oculus Rift is gonna change everything, okay? And Oculus has changed nothing thanks to Facebook. Also in yep, practicality. That's, that's but what happens. But yeah, anyway. Yeah. Uh it's it's funny because usually when it comes to like favorite companions, people are always asking us like who we like the most, and we usually agree on Midna. It's the first time anyone's asked us who would beat up who. I don't think I've ever said um, Midna in my life on this podcast. I want you to take that back. Uh, I <laughs> all right. Will I not. think the king from I Zelda refuse. City. I Let's be that, honest. Well, that's you might have me there. I might agree with that. There you go. Who who would beat up such a lovable <laughs> oaf? Oh, speaking of kings, we uh we learned more about oh, Triforce right. Heroes recently. Yes. Yeah, we learned uh a lot of new characters. We learned their names, what they're like, uh the the major players in this in the uh series, and I finally saw a picture of the princess trapped in tights. She's what? pretty funny. It's like this like entire bodysuit. So you know the plot of Triforce Heroes, right? I uh that a king is crying and he needs a new pair of pants. <laughs> Those are nice pants, sir. I, they do not reach his knee, his ankles, but they are nice pants. No, no, I thought I thought uh, the story was that he. Ne- what is the story behind the game? The story is that uh, the princess has been trapped in a pair of tights. Oh my god! That she can't get off by a witch, and the king needs uh, heroes to lift the curse. So he looks for some legendary heroes, and he finds three kids, and he kind of pushes them together, and says, "Go, go on an adventure and defeat." The is witch. this maybe the strangest, most random plot a Zelda game has ever had? Yes, and I love it. I love everything about Trapped it. Trapped in time. There is, yes, there is a there is the witch subdue corpse, uh, led by a na- man named Sir Orubaku. There is a witch with a name that is harder to say than Sir Hasrila, which I never thought was possible. Okay. Yeah. What about so, the uh, uh, what I... about the modern cheerleader costume? Have they explained that yet? They, do they need to? Oh, actually, they explain that the the clothes designed by Madame Taylor are all magical. 
they'll have special powers within. That's Where, why. Wasn't there a time when people were really upset that a train could exist in the Zelda series? Now we're just ignoring a modern high school cheerleader costume on Link. Sir? Yes. He rocks it. Whether or not he rocks it or not doesn't explain how such a thing exists in the universe. That also is is true. true. This is very true. I guess fans just care more about locomotives than they do modern clothing on Link. We're talking about a game that has magic jeggings that are trapping the princess. Jeggings are pretty magic in real life, okay? They are pretty magic. There you go. Is it pants? Is it tights? I don't know. We weren't meant to know. And we never will. <laughs> I wonder if anyone's still listening at this they point. Better be. um, they're, they're captivated. Hopefully. <laughs> it's just like, it's totally nonsense at this point. It's been 45 minutes of just rambling. But yeah. Uh, if you want more info on that or how the costumes have souls in them, check out the link dumb down below. That's also where you can find some more information on our friend Josh, uh, who runs BitLock. Uh, Josh, what can they find when they go to your channel? They can find a whole bunch of Nintendo-related video game coverage. Can they also see some fabulous cosplay? They can see cosplays. They can see... They can use their eyeballs to see what might be the first time a male has officially cosplayed as Zero Suit Samus. I I guess I can't. Cosplayed and rocked it. Okay, uh, I'll take your word for it there. We'll go with that. (laughs) Uh, Still waiting for that pinup calendar. The, the posters uh, and the cardboard standees are already in production. Sweet. You guys will be getting I, I've ordered about a thousand of them. <laughs> <A> thousand, <laughs> one thousand units, my good sir. All right, you'll get them. <laughs> my own little Josh army. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's talk about the... Something that really got my interest this week was the voice actor strike. I'd like Ooh. to talk to, to you guys about that because I think it is very relevant to video games. Yeah, I want to make sure like my games still have Steve Bloom, so they need to pay him more. Colin, or they got they got to play Nolan North. Yes, it is me. More. Would you like to do the honors and explain what happened this week with the voice actor strike? Um, there's really it started yeah, a while ago. Yeah, there's not really much to say. It um, it pretty much was that video game actors want to be unionized or at least get the same benefits as they would of being, you know, that they would in Mm -hmm. TV or film, but for acting in video games. That's Mm -hmm. pretty much all there is to say. Um, There's a lot more to it, and when you first kind of glance through it, it's kind of really fishy, some of the things they kind of bring up, but I actually had a chat with a friend of mine who is a voice actress who works in the industry, and uh, she cleared a few things up. But there's still there's still generally one thing that kind of bothers me about it, um, but otherwise I agree with it in full, and that is there's now obviously you know voice actors should get royalties for their work they they do put a lot of, of work into these games, um, but the strange thing is that they put down that the they should only be paid like the yeah, it's really weird how to word this. They want to be paid on certain levels of royalties as opposed to like slow percentages. Let me let me just read it off from I don't the article. I think they were getting Hang slow percentages. I think it's just bad. All right. Um, they proposed a payment scheme in which the actors would receive bonuses if the projects they work on sell upwards of two million copies, and they would keep bumping up these royalties until it hit about eight million. Every, every... and. Right, every two it's million. It's kind of weird because two million is the, their idea of a successful video game, but a lot of AAA games you might have heard of recently that they need a lot more before a game can be deemed successful. Metal Gear Solid Five has been rumored um, to need at least six million units sold before even it can be considered successful and actually get its money back. So the mm-hmm. only thing that's kind of weird is that pretty much while the union would be considering that game to be a success for selling 2 million copies, the company would just be paying out just for something that's essentially a flop. But I'm right. sure there's more to it, and, and it, there's that's probably something they can work out. Mm-hmm. I remember when I first looked at it, I was very con- uh, I was concerned about like indie studios and things like that. Uh because it, it kind of felt like non-union actors were going to get kind of 
screwed over, people trying to make it into the industry for the first time. Uh, did you find anything that kind of clarified that? Or it's, no? What I've pretty much learned is that if if you are running a smaller company and you are not signed up with uh, that guild, that union, to hire actors that are in that union, you don't have to really worry about that. Non-union actors right. can still get non-union jobs, and non-union jobs can still get non-union actors. Okay. It's uh, important to be part of a union, though. Uh, like, well, I went to a con this summer. It was um, SuperCon in Miami, Florida. Mm-hmm. And I uh, went and saw a voice acting panel. Um, And so up on the panel were people that a lot of, like... Not more TV stars and video games, um, but each of them went on to tell their own stories about how it was really important for their career to get for them to kind of lift off in their career by becoming a part of the union and become getting an agent and all these things because that's pretty much how you get jobs. It's really tough to get jobs when you're not part of a union and like if you don't have a manager or uh, some sort of representation, then they're gonna look for you. After the fact, they've already looked at all these people that are already part of a union and stuff. All right. And so, like, right now, it might be the time for those kind of people to... They're going to get more jobs if this thing um, carries on, like, this whole lawsuit and everything. And Mm -hmm. it'll be great for these people to start off their careers in a way, but, like, it's going to suck for some of the existing existing talent that people, like, you know, they know and they love. Like, I saw a tweet from David Hayter today um, uh, talking about this. And he posted a photo, uh, like a screenshot from Metal Gear Solid, uh, one of the earlier ones that he was in. And I'm like, that's, uh, in a way, I, I kind of laughed because um, I'm like, oh, that's funny because uh, Keith or Sutherland is uh, is um, big boss now. You know what? I honestly, I sorry to break, cut off topic, but I don't like Keith or Sutherland's performance. I, I mean, just don't. That's fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. I don't, I mean, I, me personally, I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, but it's just an example, you know, like yeah. they, he, I'm sure I, I'm not saying there's, I have no idea why he didn't get the position, you know, um, uh, why it, he didn't get the position of snake again yeah. or uh big boss. Yeah. Uh, actually that has to do probably with the fact that they wanted the game to be a little bit more marketable and attaching a, a, a big name Hollywood actor to the, the games would definitely boost sales. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I can see that. I, at I mean, least, at least in the eyes of invest- investors, it, it does look a little bit more enticing uh, when you're able to get better. I guess actors. during the be- the during the development, the the beginning development of Metal Gear Solid Five uh, or at Ground Zeroes, even like Konami was thinking a little differently back then. But I could I could see that from like three years ago, Konami. I couldn't see that now, um, mm-hmm. j- just because of we. Well, know now Konami has completely lost their mind. So who knows? Yeah. yeah. So I don't know who's running that company right now. Um, uh, but no, that's probably just a juice. pachinko machine. Yeah, <laughs> that would be funny if that's like David Hayter becomes like uh, you can hear a his p- voice. A telling, pachinko machine. Yeah, you you hear his voice telling use as a pachinko machine. Pull but, my slot. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but anyways, that was just my two cents on on the subject matter. All right. I think a bigger issue is programmers not getting royalties. Developers, like, yeah, developers like... and programmers and all that. They. I mean, they're still just like a cog in the machine, but I feel like that's a whole other discussion for you know. That like time. everyone deserves bonuses. Yeah. everyone does. <laughs> Honestly, like that's because that's the biggest part of the game. I understand the marketing and the publishing; it it takes some time, but like they're the only ones sort of reaping the benefits, uh, other than the developers sort of being able to get the games they want, sort of. And that's like not even the case for companies like EA and and Ubisoft. Um, well, I mean, I'm sure... uh, smaller studios are studios that have a, a creator's name tied to the work, like, you know, yeah. a Hideo Kojima production, um, or directed by Even, Hideo Kojima. Or like or it, uh, Keiji Nick, Inafune. Yeah, or the guys from, who did Shovel Knight, you know, Nick Waz and stuff. Like, they, they're in their own right celebrities as game developers. Uh, we've definitely put them more in the public eye, which does kind of benefit them for a lot of reasons. It does make them that, more appealing that's to other why companies the, who yeah. want to... And I think that's probably why they like the strike is coming up because it's like, all right, now that we all know that the little guys like can make it, we need to make it too. Like, it's got to be the same all around. And yeah, and it's good. I I feel like this 
we needed this strike or like the industry itself they needed this so they well, wouldn't... i mean i think it would change video... standards all around maybe i think that video games definitely need to fix a lot of the if they're going to have voice acting if they're going to have writing they should definitely improve the quality of that cuz I've been very underwhelmed by a lot of the what is considered to be high quality video game writing for years, um, and I think it really is. We're, what about we're in the case of that. acting? What? Well, I said, what about in the case of acting? Oh yeah, that too. But that's that's part that has a lot to do with the writing available because you can deliver lines that are bad really well, but they're still going to sound bad. Uh, sometimes it's just working with the material. Uh, in the case of the Sonic Adventure people, uh, those voice actors went in with no knowledge of the game, no knowledge of the scenes themselves, and were just told to read lines by people that barely spoke English. It's, uh, it's really that like video game writing has to become better before video game acting mm-hmm. can get better. Right, because so, it's hard to pour and invest in material that's not worth a grain of salt. Like... Is like, that, Beyond Two Souls is a game that has two really, really good actors in it. William Dafoe was phenomenal. Yeah, William Dafoe, Ellen Page, really great, but what they had to work with was god-awful. Ended yeah. up becoming laughable. Yeah. I thought, well, it's, like... It's, it's, they're, they're such good actors that the writing quality almost becomes subpar. What What do you think about that and in more the case of... obvious, hmm? Well, I was saying, what what do you think about that in the case of the new, like, the PS4 game, uh, Until Dawn, with Hayden Panettiere? That's different, because that was meant to be, like, cheesy bad. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, right, I'm I'm not saying it's bad, like, slasher game, yeah. or slasher film, turn slasher game, like, uh, that's sort of awesome. And anyway, I feel like that's good writing, not as cheesy, think, but, like, I think it's, good for I think what Until it is. Dawn is the only game to have done what David Cage has been trying to do. For three games. For years and years. And yeah. somehow has done it better than all three combined. By not taking himself seriously and letting the the medium sort of blossom well, it, out of the idea. It's also that the story is a lot more fun and it's there's yeah. a lot more to do and there's a lot more choices. Like it's not there's no illusion of having choice. Like what you do actually affects what happens throughout the game multiple times. Right. Right. I it's it's definitely something I really want to get into. I really want to get into that game cuz I've only heard good things about it and every time I hear someone describe the game to me and I've every review I've seen has only enticed me. If you me have more. a PS4, yeah, I was... buy Until Dawn. I mean, it's the it's the only no. game you can actually buy for the PS4, so Right. I mean, you know, aside from Colin's uh, bias, there's a lot of games you can get for the PS4. They happen to be on other consoles. I just happen to think they're better on the PS4. Um, but that's just me. Also, from software makes good games. Uh, anyways, Dark um, Souls Three coming to PC. Oops. Anyway, continuing. Blood, Bloodborne, Bloodborne. Great. Uh, I, I think, I think, um. There was something I wanted to talk about, like, really badly, and I, I keep forgetting what it was. Let's do more fan topics. Yeah, we could go into more fan topics until I remember. Sean from New York asks us, uh, I recently saw the video of Kakariko Village uh, made in Unreal Engine 4, and it blew my mind. I wanted to know if you guys think they should have graphics like this for the next Zelda game. Thank you for asking your question, Sean. <laughs> well, Sean. Do you think that Nintendo games would profit or, or benefit from better graphics? In the way yes. that a lot of other games do. Yes, they would. Everything would benefit from looking prettier. I mean, I imagine mean, yeah, a Mario like, that's more reflective. And yet your favorite like, game is Wind great. Waker. Well, but that's just it. Like, to me, pretty is not how many polygons you can cram onto a screen or how clean the textures are. I don't know. Wind Waker HD looks pretty bad. You what? 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 <laughs> they they turned Josh the is literally doing like, way too high. No, no, no. It's the ocean. It's the ocean in the summertime, and it's a sunny day. You're going to see even more than that. It, aren't you guys in Florida? Uh, I'm yeah, not. I am. Well, I, yeah, well, Adam and I are, but <laughs> so Colin there you is. Go. Colin's with Sean in New York. That game should not have as much bloom as, like, Battlefield Bad Company 2, though. See, I don't think it did have a lot of bloom. In the original screenshots, I think it had more bloom lighting than what it ended up having in the final game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think if you're out on the ocean... You're going to see some... I, I don't know why... It's going to be I, a lot of reflective elements. Yeah, I do think that that's right. But I, I do agree that, I mean, kind of play with the medium. <laughs> you kind of have I the mean, option there to... 
lower it. I guess uh, also with the Toonie style, I don't know. Maybe they could have done I mean, it better. Overall, uh, I think I that's, just sides. A, that's just in the case of Zelda. I mean, in, if you guys remember, I think we talked about this on a few podcasts ago, or I, I brought it up. I know I did. The pro- the NX is planned to have a cap- like the technology to be able to run the Unreal 4 engine on it. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, they wouldn't have yeah. it on there if they couldn't use I it. I mean, the Wii U you know? can run Unreal 4, just no one wants to put Unreal 4 on the Wii U. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Wii U can't really if do Unreal that Unreal 4 well. can run on an iPhone, I'm pretty like I'm pretty sure it can run on the Wii U. No, all right. It run on an iPhone, but does it utilize all the tools that it needs to utilize? You know what I'm saying? I know like, what you're you can saying. Make but... a game. You can make a mobile game out of Unreal 4, but it's like it's not utilizing everything. Yeah. Right? I'm, I just, sure that, I mean, all right, they can make a game on the Wii U, uh, but it's not going to use all the, the things that kind of max out Unreal 4. Well, like, I think the question, other... I, I think the question more is, do you need to? Do you need to use Unreal 4 on the Wii U? That's, that's uh, the question I think a lot of people have, no, have it, been asking is like, is it matter? It, you know, do you really need, do you really need like fancy wheels and rims on a, 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 a go-kart, you know? Or, or well, I mean, regular Nintendo's not going to do it. Nintendo has their own engines and stuff. You know, they're going to be using those. They're just going to improve yeah, those. Based on anything. technology from the 90s. <laughs> I, whether it's based on technology from the 90s or not, that's just what they're going to do. Um, right. It's actually funny because one of the la- the games I'm excited for coming up in like the next year or two or whenever it hits, uh, which is Kingdom Hearts 3, uh, they switch it from, you know, Square Enix's regular engine. In-house uh, engine use, to in- Unreal 4. To Unreal Four, yeah, and the yeah. game looks fantastic. So it's there's a uh, they only I think they'll only switch over and use it if something happens to theirs. Well, they realize it was we need uh, to get with the times. It was a problem because they were like having issues. They were trying to fix problems that have already been fixed in other engines, and it just a, means they're making Kingdom Hearts Three a great ass game. And so they realize their a, engine is crap, and they need to use a better engine to handle a great ass game. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. There's very little I know about web design, but there is like a whole thing about, you know, you could build your own web host from scratch or you could just, you know, use one that already exists. Like if you're making a, like a restaurant oh, website, well, or a host just... or the code for the website, the code, a host is something, yeah, yeah, a host is yeah, something yeah. entirely different. Well, if you, if you're like making a restaurant, just use like a, a web site builder, like a, like a, one of the ones you can buy or one of the ones you can just like get for free. Instead of trying to write the code yourself, because a menu is always going to be to be a menu. You're not going to need to redesign the entire idea of how to make a menu on a website. It's already been done so many times that it's easy. It's like, you know, point and click, you're done. It's already been kind of set to right. just go anywhere you need. Um, I think that in Kingdom Hearts 3, they kind of saw that same case where it's like, we could have, they, they were like, I think this is in, inter- in interviews or in press releases, uh, you know, they, they had problems and they could have fixed them. But it's it was a much easier transition just to swap over the engine, I don't so they think could focus it was, on getting it out quicker. It, I mean, not even that. I don't want to say they were taking the easy way out. But they no, 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 not that, the easy way out. But there's, it, I mean, there's a it, precedence of like you know, development times are very, very, very tight. Listen, Adam, and they there's need one thing all the time. I get. know is so, they don't give a crap about development times. We've been waiting for this they, game for more than ten the years. Fact, the fact that they were willing to show off tech demos means that they're getting more comfortable with the idea and they know that as soon as they did that they were gonna get uh a little bit more uh publicity than they were than than uh before than the right. just leaving everyone silent um right. so they want to rush the game out as quickly as they can without you know leaving major bugs in and switching to unreal 4 might you know let them keep the production speed that they were hoping for while also addressing the bugs that they needed to be fixed immediately. Not, I mean, and not to say that they're rushing the game, but they're just trying no, to like, no, also, no. But they're I trying to keep to deadlines, and deadlines that are important. Prettiest doesn't necessarily mean the best engine. Right. Like, that's why people I'm, might be just switching yeah. over to Unreal Engine Four because it's already been like compiled a bunch of times, and resources are a lot easier to get for it. But I mean, you know, I, I understand why people use Unreal. Actually, you. You bring up a point. Because Unreal Engine 3 is used everywhere, was... but that engine was ass. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to say, like, I know I don't know why people are using Unreal Engine 4, but after Unreal... The, so Unreal decided to do this thing where they, they released don't the engine Epic? for free. Epic, Epic, Unreal, same stuff. Um, they Alright, their engine is now released for free. Anyone in the world can get the full engine on their computer. Yeah. I mm-hmm. d- installed it, like, a, a few months ago. Um, the only thing is, uh, if you're going to sell a game after the point where you make two grand off the game, uh, they're going to start collecting a percentage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and you're going to pay back them. So, I mean, won't that get expensive for games that use Unreal? Yeah. To like, it's, it's a but risk I mean, not, not as much as I mean licensing any other engine, really. Like, right? But I mean, the, you don't pay that many royalties. The engine is only like, as good as the people who are coding it and utilizing it. Mm-hmm. Like, id Tech Five right. is a yeah. fantastic engine, but the problem is, is that so far the people that have been using it have just. What do you? What do you the mean? The people have been using it don't have no fucking yeah. clue what they're doing with it. Rage, uh, Evil I... Within, they run terribly. They're horribly optimized, and they have like. I enjoy Evil Within. And I right, think you also got to think about but, games but, yeah, like no, Wolfenstein. But that's what I'm saying. Wolfenstein, the New Order, and the Old Blood prove that id Tech Five is a fantastic engine, but no one knows mm-hmm. how to use it properly. Wolfenstein right, is probably the only a, uh, sole exception of that game, the, of that engine. There's still, seriously, only like, yeah, there's only like five games using yeah, that engine. Yeah, right I'm surprised now. Fallout so, I mean, 4 like, doesn't use it. Uh, I'm, well, Fallout 4 is using, an, like, they've been improving the one that they were using for uh, yeah, they, Skyrim. Well, that's, and it's the same one they've been using since Morrowind. That was a terrible but, system. But is it? Because I think yeah. it Yeah, has... the Gamebryo engine's garbage. What are you talking but there's such a charm with games like Fallout yeah, 3 like and Skyrim, especially Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, that was like... <laughs> Alright, no, 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 but like, then you gotta think about things that just happen in the game that you just can't explain, and that is because of an engine that is sort of so broken, you're saying bugs? but also works. Are we going back to that conversation we had about bugs being charming? I mean, I like I like glitches and bugs in any game, but... When they developed Skyrim, I feel like they they saw the bugs. They absolutely had to see them. You don't just miss certain things. But they were just there like, you are know things that are uh, that is just I forget the exact term. It's something about like uh, as shipped. I yeah. think it's called uh, where it's something that they recognize as a bug, but because they're trying to keep product uh, deadlines, they will ship it out anyway with the bug. I, I don't to patch think it it's at some like, time later. I don't uh, think it's like that at all. I think they think it. They think it's funny. They're going to put it in, and I'm, that's exactly what I think they're going to do. No, like you said, those same bugs yes. are stopping me from enjoying a great game like Fallout Three on a newer operating system. Yeah. Is it really? Yes, because I can't run it. Is yeah, it because really? it, if if the if it ruins the immersion of the game, or just totally I think stops you from not playing it overall. Did, did you guys ever see like those flying bear things for Skyrim? Like the the flapping stuff that is because of things that are happening that aren't supposed to happen, you know. But is that you taking the game seriously? Is that you treating like they're trying to tell you Um, you're taking video games so seriously? Look at this, you're in a game and this is Josh. Back me up on this. You played a Link Between Worlds, right, Josh? (laughs) Yes. That game has silliness and also seriousness, and it does both intentionally. It doesn't leave bugs in. It just does things. It makes funny dialogue. It makes funny scenarios. It throws things at you with the intention of trying to make you laugh or to keep you lighthearted while also giving you the serious gameplay. Okay, I, I would agree Bugs with that. Bugs are fine and all that. that, but I mean, I should be okay. able to reload my last save I just, and the game should work fine. And if the ga- if that doesn't happen, that, then, all right, that, then I'm going to be pissed. Those things, no, th- those things I agree with. Those fixes and issues I agree with. But like, there's just some things that are wrong with it. Engines, the unexplainable things, I just feel like, those are things I mean, that developers don't. Cry don't Engine is probably those. one of the best looking engines ever made, and yet no one uses it. Isn't it because it's really complicated? What was the last game used in that one? Enemy Front. The only the last game I can think of using Cry I... Engine was Enemy Front, and that's a yeah. budget World War Two shooter. There's a, actually all right. You said earlier I wanted to bring this up about like tech demos. Trying to get back on the conversation of Zelda. Um, you guys remember mm-hmm. when the Wii U was first releasing and then they had the Legend of Zelda of tech demo? Yeah, the Wii U tech yeah. demo looked fantastic. Of so that actually, by the way, I don't think that was, <laughs> I do not think that was running on an actual engine. Yeah, I no, think was that was definitely... seriously a video that was playing that you could swap between layers to change the lighting and whatnot. Yeah. And then they just mm-hmm. applied like a fisheye kind of camera Has lens anyone... to it to make it look like you were moving it around. That, is that what that was? I'm yeah. like, what, are, what What happened to that engine? Is that what we're going to see it on It doesn't exist. That was like that was like Pixar just pre-rendered Have you guys ever something. Played, Obviously, yeah, Pixar uh, didn't do it. This is going to be a weird question. Have you guys ever played the tech demo uh, application that Nintendo <laughs> no. made for the GameCube? Uh, I did not. No, but I've seen that. Oh, that's, that's yeah. just cool. The GameCube has what is like, it? There's apps? They made or a... They, they the, when they were first showing off GameCube hardware, they made like a disc full of all these different tech demos and, and like renders. And you, it's like a big 
render of like Peach's castle and you can float through and it shows off how the thing can do anti-aliasing and transparency and reflections and like 30 other things and it's really cool. Oh wow. Yeah, that's cool. You can play it on like a golf uh, emulator. But no, I've, you know, I did not know that. I've never gotten into emulating the GameCube. It's very Seems easy. Complicated. I just bought a GameCube this year and it was great and I like it. It's the first time you owned a GameCube? This is the first... Well, I've always... I, my cousin owned the GameCube growing up, and I would go okay. over to my cousin's house all the time. Mm-hmm. So I got to play GameCube games with him. Um, Just the first time I actually owned one was... I decided to purchase one this year. I'm like, I'm going to just buy some of the games that I want, and I'm not done buying. I still have, like, maybe five more on my list I, I want to get. Um, But I did, and I, I really like having it. It's just like, man, I wish, I wish I had this in my house growing up, but instead I had the PS2 and the Xbox and N64. So mm-hmm. it's like... And then I got a Wii... And then the 360 and PS3 and all that jazz. Uh, <laughs> I remember when I was younger, uh, my neighbor, like across the street, uh, we both had GameCubes, but he had Luigi's Mansion, and I would always want to go over and play it, and I ended up like, bothering him like every other day to just oh, play dude. Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's Mansion is awesome. Oh, it's a great game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and by the way, uh, Colin, I just want to say, I just looked it up, and uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Evolve uses oh, CryEngine. Yeah. And so, oh, Battle Cry's using it? Yeah, a lot of modern yeah, games. Yeah, but not like... Homefront? Not like a terrible, like, great amount. Sonic oh, Boom yeah, that Rise does use CryEngine. I forgot. I completely forgot Sonic Boom uses. That's the best advertisement for it ever. God. And then, <laughs> also the... Uh, uh, Rise the, of Roman. The Frostbite engine that EA uses. I, th- I like, thought that was strictly like... that. I mean, that's what Battlefront is going to be using. Yeah, but they should license that out more. Uh, no, I yeah. mean yes, because so other places can use a good ass engine. Yeah. Um. No, well, I mean, Plants vs Zombies: Carded Warfare is actually really fun. Yeah. Good. I I have it. I'm not gonna say it's not. You know, I I don't play it as often. It's more of a game that like I, I my brothers. I, it's I a good uh, split screen co op game. It is. Um, but it's it's not something that you know, you go out and get. I would shooters definitely need to look at that. I don't think Call of Duty should have their hands on that any day though. I would never let Activision have their hands. Well, it's that. fine. They don't need Call of Duty still using the Quake Three engine. So... There they go. They don't need to touch that. Battlefield is a game that like. What, what do you prefer better, Battlefield or Call of Duty? If you say Call of Duty, I'll stab you in the throat. But why? Well, okay. Well, all right. Here's <laughs> wow. Here's You're really back in the corner with that answer. Yeah. I'll I'll go with. It depends on what like era of Call of Duty and Battlefield we're talking about. If we're if you talk Modern Warfare Two and like Bad Company Two. I mean, I... Bad Company? Did you enjoy Bad Company too? If not, yeah. you can call... You did? I mean, Good. no, because there's, there's two eras of Battlefield. There's, there's like, up to 2142, and then there's Bad Company 1 and on. And mm-hmm. if we're talking about pre-Bad Company 1, I totally prefer Battlefield, because 1942 and Vietnam and 2 and 2142 are, like, some of the best games made for PC. The- um, on the other they... hand, Call of Duty really picked up the slack with World at War, Black Ops, Black Ops 2, and Battlefield 3 and 4 are... You think Battle of Black Ops 2 was good? Yes. I didn't... I will say I enjoyed the single player, sort of, but the multiplayer just kind of bored me, and the zombies... the What they did with zombies... Zombies in well. Black Ops 2 was terrible, but yeah, overall, the... I... I mean, the Treyarch Call of Duties are printing out a much better package than any of the newer Battlefield titles. Uh, well, Battlefield or Call of Duty titles? Battlefield titles. I mean, Battlefield, Battlefield 3, and 3 4 was, was okay, but it's the single player was the worst. Battlefield 4 is I mean, overall a terrible I, package, I, and, I don't think and I, Hardline I was a my complete life. mess. Uh, so I played the I yeah, played the Hardline, Hardline was definitely I played the Hardline beta. I played um, the alpha. I never and touch the any single players of like any of the battlefields. I'm strictly multiplayer. I'll play the single players on the Call of Duties, except for Modern uh, Advanced Warfare. Advanced Warfare, I did the multiplayer and I enjoyed that just like this last month. Oh yeah, no, it's um, fantastic. I love Advanced Warfare's multiplayer. Yeah, there's um, nothing ob- like I'm just gonna say this right now. People are gonna give me slack, good, but whatever. Good there's games, nothing objectively like... wrong with Call of Duty or liking Call of Duty. There are too many of them. And some of them take themselves way too seriously, mm. and they lead to them being awful, like ghosts. But for the most part, I mean, if you just play the Treyarch ones, they are fantastic. In, yeah, in a agreed. in a total right. '80s action movie right. way. Uh, 
I want to kind of switch gears. That's let's go, let's, go, okay. uh, let's do this. Josh, yo, how do you feel about esports? How do I feel about esports? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I, he said that as though you're like trying to Counter Strike Go got something. a really fantastic Maybe. update recently that fixes the hit boxes. Finally. Colin, stop being such a nerd. It's not bad. Get out of here. One of the biggest games ever. Yeah. Uh, I, I literally know next to nothing about esports. Okay. Well, if How do you, guys you feel do, about that? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I uh, draft king. No, no, I just want to say I've watched little to no esports, but there's, I have such a like a fascination about wanting to know more about it, mm-hmm. just because it's like it's it's really interesting in a way that like. Gaming is finally getting sort of, sort of. It's on like the footsteps. It's on. It's on like the stepping stones to getting recognized in the sports community as esports. I mean, Star like StarCraft has always been like big tournament wise and even broadcast. I mean, hell, it's the national sport of South Korea. Um, <laughs> Heroes of the Star. Like it really is. Heroes of the Star. And then I thought that was League. No. Starcraft, man. No, it's Starcraft, definitely. Star- well, Starcraft's been around longer. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. And I mean, Quake Three has been like the go-to competitive shooter since it came out. In fact, there's yeah. still a whole convention around playing Quake, Quake- Three, QuakeCon, which I've been to, and it's okay. Didn't this last <laughs> QuakeCon they give out a bunch of stuff? They showed off a lot of Doom Four, and I was really sad yeah. I wasn't there. No. Uh, but the reason I mention is actually, first of all. Uh, this weekend that Smash tournament, I actually tried commentary for the first time. Oh boy, were you good? Yeah. No, I I know very little about the technical skill, but the guy I was commentating with knew like everything. He was like he knew hitboxes, he knew percentages, he knew what strategies. So the whole conversation was just me asking him about what the players are doing and what they should be doing or like <laughs> how they should be reacting, and just figuring out how they were understanding each other I mean, during the gameplay so and, this is uh, what you this is what i see adam you you are you know how to be a host you're a host man this is gonna be your guy on the inside you be like you you should just have a pad and paper and be like all right so i'm here with my special other host who knows more about this than i do all right so you're gonna walk us through these players what's going on in their head right well, now Well, no I, I i would ask him like all right so how should uh how should greninja or uh how should uh lucario you know, approach the stage again. You know, Sheik is you know edge guarding, but it's they have pretty decently high percentages. You know, what should what is Lucario should be doing in this moment? Like, you know, what's the best strategy? Or like, would throwing an aura balls be good? That sort of thing. I would just ask about strategies that I thought would be good and see if they worked. So and you use, he would answer. you're now going to use these things to your advantage. You're going to win every Smash Bros. tournament ever. I did not win a single like set. Well, and, now that uh, you know this information, I'm so just... yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, afterwards, uh, he came up to me and he was like, you did good. And I'm like, really? It's, it was just me being awkward while you explained to me why I was right or wrong. And he's like, no, but usually what happens with commentary and Smash Bros is they both go, oh, that was a nice DI. Oh, and that was a good up throw. And that's it. So that was comforting. Uh, that's really good. But anyway, uh, the reason that I was really excited about esports this week is that, uh, a popular fantasy league site that does a lot of sports uh, DraftKings has actually started to uh, sign partnerships with esports teams to open an esport fantasy section on their site. That's uh, awesome. So an official esports fantasy league has almost started in the US and almost in Canada. Uh, it's going to be starting in October, right around the sort of league. They've partnered with about six teams. So if you are into fantasy like leagues and you like uh, esports, if you like league, it's a good place to start. It's a good like fun way. To I can't wait, wait to start my own esports team sponsored by DraftKings <laughs> and Pornhub. <laughs> but no, I think it's interesting. I think it's really cool that, you know, video games are being recognized as like a a more acceptable thing to be to be like a fan of uh not only by you know the co- like in general things, you know, Comic-Con, uh, you know, your 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 gaming conventions that sort of thing, but also by, you know, the the sports section of the of of our of our community you know we're seeing um esports become more of a viable thing for a lot of people you know esports athletes are getting accepted to colleges and getting sponsored by colleges to be a part of their esports team and that's pretty much it heroes uh, of the dorm yeah yeah you're seeing a lot of stuff like that i think it's i don't know i think it's really cool and i think it's a 
a huge step in uh the right direction uh but uh do you guys do you guys think i'm overreacting to that or no no, no, no. i think that's like, incredible that's like okay. that's almost i don't want to say that's, that's not groundbreaking news but that's like these are the first steps it's going to be till like we see we we walk into bars and we're going to see like there's going to be crowds of people in sports bars for like oh they're wearing the, like they're Starcraft like they're wearing tournament. like evil geniuses or like uh when they uh, start cursed, <laughs> like jerseys yeah when they start like... selling jerseys of this stuff that's when you know <laughs> Excuse me. I, That's when you know it's gone. I big. don't watch much like tournament footage, but man, like I could watch Quake Three and Counter Strike go mm-hmm. like competitions all day. Like really? Counter Strike competitions are especially Quake Three because Quake Three everything is just a blur. Everything is a constant blur, and you you know what I would love to what? see? Animal Crossing like competitions. Where like you speed run through the game. <laughs> How would when are we gonna get yeah, Jackbox like, speed... Party this... back? Like esports. They're like, I want, oh, that, I that want game is great. Vintage, uh, competitive. Uh, but Josh, can you imagine? Imagine this for me. You know, it's two players. They start out. They're like sitting in like a Thunderdome style thing, uh, and they have the 3ds in their hands. And it's like ready, go, and they they have to like maximize like the size of their house before the other player does, and they have to do it like within a certain time frame. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Could be cool. So this would have to be a special game designed specifically for this. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Animal, Animal Crossing esports. Yeah. Animal Crossing esports. Perfect. What if it's like it's competitions based on who can make the best happy home d- designer crap? <laughs> there you go. Official term. That game literally doesn't judge you though. By the way, that game doesn't even. That game never tells you whether or not you did a bad thing. You're always just like, yeah, all right. Really. Yeah, Coming soon no to Zelda Informer, so what's the, point the of the game? ever competition of style-savvy trendsetters. Oh my god, Adam would so <laughs> want to be a judge on that. I'd be a judge <laughs> on that. Why? Because you're so like, that just looks like crap. <laughs> that is a thing I say. <laughs> that is. In a way that I sometimes say it. That just looks like crap. <laughs> uh, I, I did see recently that like the hardest level in Mario Maker so far finally got beaten. There you go. Uh, that was kind of neat. Uh, it's really interesting to see because I was I'm surprised by how many difficult levels are in Mario Maker already. Like how how much that community has grown and how rapidly it's grown, uh, and like how passionate people are about it. I really hate the uh, I shouldn't say hate because I don't want to offend people that make these levels, but I don't know what the appeal is behind the levels that just play themselves, where all the levels are just like don't touch anything. I think it's like watch the character get pushed through the level. Machine games for older PCs, right? But those are like those are incredibly rampant on the like top levels for the game for some reason. Just just seeing like how you can just take everything Mm -hmm. in the Mario universe to make it play in just one sequential sequence. You can you can literally stack things and mesh them together in weird ways. You can have like sequ- Bowser Jr. Really riding on top of Bowser and on top of him have a hammer, bro. I don't know. I don't think I'm such a, I'm a much of a fan of that because it's like I, I mean, what's the point of this game was create awesome levels and like do awesome crazy things and like try to do it not just to, you don't just sit there in a regular Mario game, mm-hmm. you know? You don't you don't just like wait for things to happen. You gotta go out and get them. Yeah, I feel like if if I'm going to play the level, I feel like I want to actually be able to play the level. It's a pure novelty, and I mean, if you want to find the weird, like, super hard levels, they're there, too. No, there's some that are, like, that throw a lot of stuff at you, and other ones that are just very precise. Uh, there's even one that, if you guys want to play Zelda 2 again, the first dungeon has been remade in Mario Maker, and it's fantastic. Uh, I made a Wind Waker course. Of course did you did. You? And should should we should we link him. the uh should we like put down the, Do you think the, people the code down below it, like they did Little Big Planet and start remaking like Wolfenstein 3D and Mario Maker? That'd be funny. Will they add like weapons? Yeah, just just find out how to. I think we mentioned this last week. I I would be I'm interested to see if anyone's gonna like try to break that game and br- crack into the code and add other like items and stuff and make the the amiibo costumes actually like with power ups. Yeah. So, you know, you get Link Sword, you get We Fit Trainers like Hula Hoop thing. Mm-hmm. Uh I don't know. It'd be it'd be pretty neat. Or you get Pac Man's ghost ability. And every enemy turns blue. Ugh. That'd be cute. But yeah, did, is there anything else you guys want to talk about this week? No, um Oh. Uh what do you guys think uh, uh this is kind of a random sort of thing. Uh, but uh, PewDiePie and the No Man's Sky Devil will appear on Stephen Colbert's show. 
uh, coming up in a few weeks. Uh, late night Stephen Colbert. That's not weird because uh, they do that. They've been doing that on like Jimmy Fallon and Conan for like really? a while. Yeah. I mean, though, I I don't follow either of those shows. Didn't uh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel have uh, what's yeah his Markiplier? Name on the show? And... Uh, Markiplier. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. Wow. They, that was with the whole Jimmy Kimmel um uh, thing that happened where he said, what's gaming? What's gaming on the internet? Blah, blah, blah. And so they went to explain to him exactly what they do for a job and and all this mm-hmm. make it valid. And he was like, oh, okay, let me play I remember Conan has this pretty bad series where he does like video game reviews. Oh my god. They're, yeah, it's like gamers. Clueless Game. Yeah, but they're yeah. so great because the people, the dude that he does it with knows a bunch about video games and it's so funny. Mm-hmm. I love their Super Smash yeah. Bros. video because like they got the demo before the game came out. Like the thing that was at the Best Buys and everything. Mm-hmm. It was just so funny. He's like, look at Kirby. He's got like a- growth growing on top of him. He can't even clap his hands. He doesn't have hands. <laughs> and it was just so funny. Uh, Alright guys. Uh... I guess that's yeah. it for this week. Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me. I want to thank uh, Josh from Bitblock for joining me. Thank you so much. It's per- it was a yeah, dream of mine to talk to such a handsome man. Uh, if you guys... <laughs> These guys don't do it for you? They're, they're not handsome enough? No, not, not anything compared to you. Be quiet. <laughs> You're like up here and they're down there. You can't see my hands, but I'm like making a big gap in between them. Uh, wow, how do you guys put up with this guy? <laughs> we don't. We, uh, yeah, we don't. <laughs> Oh, oh they don't talk to me outside of the podcast. I <laughs> um, I, I talk to Adam every day. Ah, because he does. I have to, so we can talk about things. <laughs> I don't talk to Adam. I only send him Papa John's in the mail. He did send me Papa John's. <laughs> I I yeah, saw it was great. That. Send me Papa John's. Okay, what's your address? We'll do it right now. Uh, it's um. Anyway, we'll do it. Eight, two, we'll one. do it off screen so that you know, we twenty two Wallaby Way. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much. If you have any of your own topics, theme song submissions. Anything like that, feel free to send that to us at ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. Once again, that's ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to follow Josh and Bitblock, check down below. We'll have his Twitter, his YouTube, anything else that he wants to have. Do you want us to put that level down there? That uh, code that they can use to play your level, your Windbreaker course? Uh, the Windbreaker course was made on the review server, so unfortunately, I need to remake it. But Make it again. The video is still up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Follow him on Twitter so you know when that, that goes up. Uh, okay. Sounds I've good. been Adam. This has been Zelda Informer Podcast, episode 55. Or sir. Have a good night, guys. Hey, I can't drive 55. You can drive. <laughs> can we end on that? We, we just did. Watch out.